Thank you for joining us on our journey here to preserve the history of mixed martial arts. When I wanted to take on this project, I needed help. I brought in one of my favorite matchmakers, Miguel Iterate, and the MMA detective, Mike Davis. So to do this, we've been able to preserve history. Welcome and enjoy. Welcome back to Mixed Martial Artifacts. My name is the MMA detective, Mike Davis, along with me as always, Miguel Iterate. And Ed Tyson, what did you bring us today? Today I have the uh, shorts that uh, Ron Van Cleef wore in UFC 4. And it just so happens that he is uh, the he goes down in history as the oldest fighter to ever compete in the UFC at 51 years old. Uh, Ron had been an actor in uh, Hong Kong and American-made uh, martial arts movies in the 70s. They called him the Black Dragon, and he was given that name actually by Bruce Lee. So, Miguel Durante. We've had many conversations about these kendo, kenpo, five monkey, you know, and mixed martial, traditional mixed martial arts guys. The thing is, though, prior to everybody understanding jujitsu existed, there was a group of those guys that legitimately wanted to test their skills. And Ron is one of those guys, not only was it around at the beginnings of the UFC, but at, he just couldn't believe that these guys weren't pushing through. So rather than nominate a, a fellow traditional martial artist that was a bit younger and stronger and faster, he went in there himself. And from what I gather, he requested Hoist Gracie because he says, I want him first. If I'm going to beat somebody, that's the guy I want. So in regards to like traditional martial artists, he's, even at this time, I've got a ton of respect for guys like Ron. And, you know, there were a lot of guys back in that era, people have that tendency to think uh, there were a lot of martial arts schools in that era where the martial artist taught whatever branch, you know, he taught, whether it be karate or kempo or, you know, any number of martial arts where, you know, what we heard, what was always not known was that they poo-pooed the UFC, that they didn't like it, that they shunned it and that they, you know, stayed to their own practices. This is where things like, you know, gym raids came and people went and wanted to show them things like that. You know, that's all kind of cartoon stuff. But I think Mike hit it on the head. I think the bottom line is, is there were certain martial artists, you know, Jason DeLucia, uh, Ron Van Cleef, um, Fred Eddie. He's acne. He's had, you know, guys who came from those practices who said, no, I got to go there and test myself. Not all of them won. Some did well, some didn't. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. But most of them are very, very memorable, you know. And Rob Van Cleef, I think, came across. I, you know, what I remember watching that one is, is he, he, they, you know, Ed, I, what I'm reflecting on is Ed mentioning his resume that and that he had been, you know, doing movies and in Hollywood, and you know, he was already a 51 year old man. He had lived a, a full life, and you notice that in his, you know, he was. Definitely like happy to be there and and like just taking the whole thing in and grateful, but also there to test himself at the ultimate. You know, 51 years of age, and you're younger than me now. And, you know, you, well, my hat's off to him. He tried. Well, for sure. And not only that, let's just talk about it. It was UFC 4, December 16th, 1994. Um, the tournament finals was between Dan Severn and Hoist Gracie. Hoist Gracie, after bowing out against... Um, my favorite Harold Howard, my favorite traditional martial artist, Harold Howard. He, um, you know, Steve Jenham comes in, wins because Ken refuses to fight him. So UFC 3, there's a ton of drama in it. And this was the return of Hoist Gracie. So he defeats a man that was a proud, is a proud American. He, Ron is still living right now, former military guy. Came in with the American flag trunks. It's a beautiful pair of trunks. It is. So how, how did you come? How did you come across this? Well, I initially bought a few items from uh, Ron directly, like his sweatshirt that he used, the Ultimate Fighting sweatshirt for training, and then I and then I bought his jacket that he had gotten because after UFC four, he actually worked for the UFC. I can't recall what exactly he was a commissioner he took with the UFC, but he, he did commissioner, commissioner. Yeah, so I got his commissioner jacket. So then I contacted him to see if he would part with those shorts. And he had let me know that he had 
gave them to one of his friends from Brooklyn, but he gave me the contact name of this guy. And, you know, I contacted him. And at the time he wasn't interested in selling them. He was a collector as well, but more into like the Bruce Lee collecting. So I don't know, maybe about a year, year and a half later, he finally contacted me and uh, ended up selling me the shorts so that he could purchase something that he was more interested in. So, you know, it worked out great for both of us. Yeah, that's good. That's good. They're they're gorgeous. And to Ron's credit, after this, he goes and studies jujitsu. And he was 51 at this time in, what, 94, December 16th and 94. In 2015 to 2021, he competed in the regional jujitsu tournaments. Like... The guy's a you, great any, man. Anybody hating on him? All right, he was doing TMA stuff. Okay, he didn't know, but when he found out, he corrected himself. You know, like I gotta honor that. Yeah, he's so. a really nice guy too. I've spoke with him several times, and just by getting to know his friend from Brooklyn, Hector Martinez, I can just tell the way the passion that he feels for the guy. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a great guy. That's cool. That's cool. So honoring Ron Van Cleef, an absolute legend of the sport, future employee of the UFC. When he was announced going into the cage, um, the UFC at the time asked for everybody to kind of make up some sort of fancy headlines or tournament wins in order that they could really kind of push the guy. And Ron didn't need to make anything up. The guy competed all over the world. And had multiple world titles, ten different black belts in different arts. Uh, it's the, the, if you look at his resume, it goes on and on and on and on. And for him to get in there and to show the world that he's willing to test his metal, it's incredibly impressive. Check out the full interview on iTunes, Spotify, and all major podcast platforms.